Yes, greetings and ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Citizen Brewery here in Tiche Poland. My name is Mitch Uber Leslie, and of course we are here for the Wargaming.net League EU Season 3 Finals. Now, I've had a little bit of a a bit of time in the last hour or so to hone some of my other skills, and that would be uh, working behind the bar here. And as we saw earlier on, you know, Denova really handed Kasna Crew some lemons, but they definitely made lemonade in that game against EPS with that 3-0 victory. It was fantastic work. And speaking of bars, I don't know if you noticed earlier with uh, Melly, she acting a little bit strange. She hasn't been spending too much time here. She actually, before her little social spot, put her shoes on the wrong feet. So that's maybe why she was a little bit wobbly. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've got one more game go to go today. It's going to be Kazda Crew up against Lemming Train. Now, the question is for all you guys, can Kazda Crew carry through that momentum that we saw them with? There was 3-0, of course, against EPS. Now, Lemming Train have been on and off a little bit in terms of their ability, uh, in terms of their performance, sorry, and of of course, their seating. So they've had to uh, come up and come down a little bit. Now, Castle Crew are already warmed up and we saw the advantage that that gave to Nova. So the question is now, will that be enough? Now, we're going to pass over to our casters in a second and hopefully, um, you know, if I make another joke, Ollie's not going to look like he's had one of these in his mouth for the last 10 seconds, but maybe we shouldn't, uh, maybe shouldn't hope for too much. Take it away, laughter and pansy. I love the way he literally held a lemon through the entire piece of that just to make one joke. He is a bit of a lemon. All right, so that was no better. I do apologize for the atrocious strokes all around, but there is one matter that is no joking around. It will be Kazan Crew up against Lemming Train. Now, big games coming up. Uh, not sure how I feel about this one. Lemming Train having a bit of a hit and miss so far, as of Kazan Crew at times, but they've certainly shown their prowess in the last couple of matches we've watched them in. And the last game was a little bit of a surprise to all of us, I think. Evil Panda Squad themselves even kind of shaking their heads as I walked around. They were not looking too good about the results that they just had. But maybe, you know, they, they can take some it's some peace in the fact that maybe Kazan Crew did really well and they can kind of be like, okay, well, at least we lost out to the guys who kind of went on and did wonders. And uh, you guys out there in Twitch chat, I'm, I've been talking to you, I've been seeing what you've been up to. Make sure you uh, get tweeting, get letting us know your thoughts on this matchup. Obviously, Lemming Train showing their strength a little earlier on, struggling a little bit at times, but certainly having that glimmer of hope in their eye, whereas Kazna Crew have looked formidable. And that's what's got them into this position. So let me know your predictions via Twitch chat. I'm, I'm keeping eyes on you. And obviously via Twitter, the best way to get involved here by tweeting at they call me Pansy and at laughterwt with the hashtag WGLEU. Simple as that. Now, let's kind of talk about your predictions as well here because I think that's something we need to take into account because we've seen a fair bit of these teams now. We've kind of got our, our kind of opinions growing about them, how they're playing in the offline events. It takes a couple of games before you can really, I think, judge someone on their performance. And I think we've kind of seen these to a good point here. So ignoring, let's say, the offline event, or, you know, sorry, excuse me, the online kind of uh, games they've had against each other. Their performance today, who do you think has the edge here? Well, it's, it's really hard to predict because in that first game against Evil Pan Squad, Lemming Train played really well. But I guess, you know, Sony did come up to me after they didn't have a single good game this whole, yeah. this whole final. So maybe that's fair enough. Kazza Crew did well against Denova, only losing 3-2. Uh, to two. Um, so, and Lemming Train just got stomped by Denova. So it's, it's really hard to predict. They seem to be good at different things. Uh, in terms of just, uh, you know, the previous results, I think you have to give it to Lemming Train. But Casa Crew have been playing so, so well. They've been on a completely different level. Also talking to some of the guys, they're chilled out, they're cool headed, and they're ready for this one. Um, in terms of predictions for myself, I honestly can't. This is one of the first times which I can't put it down and say, yeah. okay, Lemming Train's gonna take it for X, Y, and Z. Because I would be lying to myself. I have no idea in this case. It is really hard. These two teams have been very different in their playing style as well, I find. It's not been you know, a clear-cut case either way. Excuse me, I've got hiccups, I think. Who knows? But uh, even looking at their online results for the last couple of seasons, um, maybe season three and season two in aspect, it's all even at 2-2. Two to two. Okay, so Playday 8, for example, it was 3-1 in favour to Kasna Crew, which was a big victory for them. But then prior to that, in Playday 19, uh, sorry, after that, if I can use uh, counting, you know, numbers are hard. In Play 19, it was, uh, I believe, 3-2 actually in favor to Lemming Train that time, and then back and forth all the way through the other seasons as well. So there's very little to split these two with. Maybe you can look at the finishing positions within the uh, league there. Lemming Train up in third, and Kaznikar in fifth. But then, I don't know, you take into account the way these guys have been playing today, and the absolute smashing Denova gave to the guys on your screens right now, you know, Kazakh put up a fight against them, a close game that came down to the last map. And if these guys couldn't even pick up a map, let alone a couple of kills, I'm not sure how they're going to fare against each other, but it's very different per team. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so different per team. I mean, varies. 
is fair enough, but it's so it, it takes it to that next level. And and you know, Lemming Train, formerly known as Mouse Sports, they they ended up uh, having to drop them. They're looking for someone else. They're looking for a, a new team to go under, and uh, this is where they'll find them if they get some good results. Um, so that's ha having that extra pressure on them of wanting to to be under a banner, of wanting that uh, real uh, extra bit of support. Also, also will put them under. A uh, fair bit of strain, but we are starting to filter into the uh, game client, so we will be getting underway fairly shortly. Um, but I said I can't predict anyone. You said you kind of agree with me, but I'm just edging ju towards Kazna, though. Yeah, just yeah, exactly. That's Judging on terms of the games, Kazna yeah. has been playing better, in my opinion. Yeah, that's the thing. It's you know, technically you can't split these two, but you know, the way I think I, I feel about it, uh, if emotion can really be taken into this, it's got to be Kazna and. I, you know, I'm such a big fan of these guys. I always have been, you know, towards the way they play, and to see them doing so well here, just it, it's fantastic to watch. And it's kind of reaffirming some of the things I thought about them, you know, originally that they are one of the strongest teams. And let's have a look at those map choices and bans. Abby being removed, no surprise there. It is Kazna crew. That's certainly nothing you want to give them for free. But other than that, what do you think we're going to see again removed? So uh, Alien, your screens on the left. That's uh, probably going to. It's going to be Ruinberg indeed. So if second map to be banned out. It's going to be a uh, rumor quite. Unusual because we've been seeing Ruinberg being played as the first map every single yeah. time. Maybe perhaps, they're not happy with perhaps it. Perhaps Lemming Train just just aren't happy with their performance on that map. Yep. Uh, they haven't won on it, so they have got probably got a good reason for that. Um, now the uh, fifth map will be Steps once again. No one yep. seems to be really enjoying that. Not enough to ban it out, but enough to put it as the fifth one. Now looking towards that fourth one. Um, I predict. Um, I think Arrive. Prokhorovka. I'm thinking of Prokhorovka at this point. Um, no team has felt really comfortable on that map, but I'll have to obviously have a look at how Team Diggins has and Virtus Pro play it tomorrow. Um, but it's going to be Ensk, fair enough. Okay. Uh, going to yeah. be one of the uh, city maps. Um, haven't seen particularly any great performances out of them. Although the Kazan crew have been yeah, playing have quite a well. A bit of strength on there, but not a, you know, a, a true shining beacon of their talent, I think. But you know, certainly deserving his position there. But Prokhorov could still in play. I, I'm very surprised not to see that map four, to be fair. I think that's one that we've seen teams quite struggling on, especially, uh, you know, Denova being one of them who struggled quite a lot there. Map three, Mines. Actually seeing that one in the normal kind of possible uh, three map run there. First time really that's coming into position rather than it being one of the later picks. But two on one now. What order are we going to see it? I think it's going to be uh, Himmelsdorf as one, although last time it was uh, Himmelsdorf as number two. But I think it's going to be number one. It's going to be, uh, uh, I think it's going to be Prokhorovka as one. Uh, but those two are, are so polar opposites. Prokhorovka is so open and, and, e and easy to play in terms of just being able to drive wherever you want and try whatever you want. Um, and Himmelsdorf is a little bit more restricted. But again, Himmelsdorf being picked as the second uh, map here. So Prokhorovka, of course, will be the first one making our five maps for this matchup. Prokhorovka, Himmelsdorf, Mines, Ensk, and finally Steps. So quite an interesting, diverse set of maps um, I'm looking forward to those two, those two first ones because if you can win on Himmelsdorf, uh, just a full-on city map, and Prokhorovka, a full-on open map, you can win on the other ones because it's just a combination of those two skills to win on the other maps, like Mines where it's kind of a hybrid or Ends where it's kind of a hybrid. Yeah, and I did ask you guys at home your opinions towards this as well, and we've had a good couple of tweets already. Uh, Marcin saying Kazna are untouchable right now. They're in top shape. I don't think that's far away from the truth, to be fair. They looked certainly like they're hitting a good skill level at the moment. Uh, beyond that, uh, Titus Braba says, uh, when World of Tanks gives you lemons, be glad they are not tomatoes. Thank you for the deep insight. That That is some next-gen kind of thing. I'm not sure if, like, lem Lemming Train, maybe? Lemming Train, yeah, should I guess we, that works. A little bit of that? We'll go for a bit of that. Uh, Kazan Crew will win 3-1. to one. Keep your predictions coming through, guys, if you do want to kind of uh, keep me up to date with your opinions on this, because I do like hearing from you. Obviously, me and Ollie both do as well, and uh, it, it's always worthwhile. And I, I'm kind of curious as to see, you know, what people really think is, is working so well for Kazan Crew right now as well. What's kind of stepped them up a gear? Because normally they struggle. Uh, to be fair, though, let's look back to season two. I'm pretty sure they did quite well on the first day and then struggled on the second. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm not mistaken, I may be, but I'm pretty sure they did quite nicely in that first day then just had a bit of a completely different turnaround well, on the second. It was, uh, it was really against OM where they, where they struggled. Yeah. Um, yeah, OM played so well that time. Um, and also being Speler quite a lot, of, a lot of times there. So, um, you know, Kaza crew seem to have found their feet. Um, you know, the guy on the screen right now seems to have given them that stability they needed. Yeah. Uh, but we can uh, really start filtering in now. I think uh, Lemmy Train has joined us in our in our in our room. So uh, 
You can see Crooks now inspecting the bison. I'm not sure if he's going to be playing that one. Fair enough, he is on Prokhorovka. He's, he's, <laughs> it doesn't even shoot half the map. Uh, but yeah, I, I think um, they need stability, and it seems that they have that. Also, it would be nice to see if they continue using this lineup in Season 4. Certainly. Um, because obviously the top six teams automatically qualify for the next season. Um, so yeah, Silmojo is joining. So now Kazna Crew is coming in. But uh, on Prokhorovka, any predictions? See, I don't like the way Kazna Crew play on it. I really don't think it's one of their I'm strengths. I'm not a massive fan. Um, I don't think they've ever really... I just don't think it suits them. They, you know, they, they, they like the maps that have kind of, you know, the Abbey style, the Mine style, things like that. Even City maps are clearly showing their strength on recently, but I've never felt this was one of theirs that they can do something with. Maybe Steps has a little bit of its own quirk so they can kind of pull something through, maybe reaching back to the De Novas of the world who kind of innovated a lot of things, but we haven't seen that so far. And I just don't like this map in Kazna Crew's hands. Now, I think, obviously, the opponent's Lemming Train, on the other hand, certainly capable. Um, you, you can't deny how they finished off that season. We have to throw our minds back to that every now and then because it's certainly a very poignant factor in this that they're so damn strong, but they've just been having very off games in my eyes. They haven't been able to cause the impact. They did not have the game they wanted against Denova in any way, shape or form. I think we can all agree on that front. But I feel as though Prokhorovka will be theirs. And it'll be very interesting to see how um, uh, Kaznikru actually do when they don't start on a high note because in their close game against De Nova they started with the victory and any you know, even though they lost in the long run on Himmelstorf they've always started with a bit of a bonus there so I'm kind of curious to see if you know if they do lose out on that first map which would be Prokhorovka can they convert it again onto Himmelstorf that's assuming obviously they do lose that's you know it's a bit of a stretch it's a bit of an assumption but I just don't like their play style on it yeah it's it's not great um, they've they've always struggled on on, on, on Prokhorovka um, in seasons past, they've been quite campy, and, and when they get caught in the headlights, they've kind of just sat there and, and, and waited for the other team, a bit like Evil Panda Squad has done in uh, the last few hours. Obviously, they are the first team to be leaving us ending the season on a low note. Powering up there. Look at Carmen. Yeah, he's just munching away. He's like, <laughs> I need my food. Look at that. Hey! Lovely, lovely stuff. Go on. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, we, we, okay, this is getting late night TV, guys. We need to back away from that and go on to Kaznikru quickly to calm people down. The whole of Dignitas has said they're like, yes, more of this, please. <laughs> Just letting you guys know, we, we are watching. Do not worry. Everyone in the crowd is certainly uh, keeping attention to this. But yeah, obviously, it has been a long day for these guys as well because, mm -hmm. you know, they've been playing all day. They've been practicing on the PCs upstairs. There hasn't been, you know, a moment of downtime really for them to completely relax and, you know, go out and get yep. food. It's, it's all been kind of going. So do forgive them for kind of shoveling food in their face when they can. To be fair, I've been, I, I, I literally drank a pizza. We, we inhaled it, didn't we? It was like yeah. a breath and it was just gone. We don't know what happened there. But let's put our minds towards Prokhorovka then because even though we may not agree that it's Kaznikru's strength, they certainly can prove their own here, but what sort of tank picks do you think we're seeing? So double T1 from both teams. Uh, AMX 3090 T69 from Kaznikru is the first pick. You know, there's always almost certainly going to be the first two picks for both teams, AMX 3090 T69 for Lemming Train as well. Um, I think we're probably going to see the 416, 416. Uh, Pershing From maybe. Lemming Train or Kazna, sorry? I, I think Lemming Train have used it a couple of times. They haven't yep. used it so far, but uh, I'm curious to see if, if, they, if they really have that up their sleeves, if they have a player capable of playing that. Certainly Hyber can play it for Kazna Crew, so he might be a potential option uh, on the roster. Um, now we're just waiting for Kazakhru to pick Nekla. It will be a Pershing and a T69. So indeed, the Pershing isn't coming out. So it's not the last pick. So there will be at least, in my opinion, one more uh, slightly unusual pick. Although the Pershing's kind of come a mainstay in these, uh, in this yeah. last season um, alongside that T69. So I don't think it's a bad thing. I've, I've loved the introduction of the Pershing. It was kind of a bit of a refreshment almost mm -hmm. to the season when they kind of got added in a little bit. And it's, it's certainly kind of deserved its place here, I feel. It, it's a great tank. Um, I'm up, almost up to it in terms of grinding. Double AMX 3090 for Elian uh, from Lemming Train. So they're going to be going for a pretty fast lineup, making their tally of AMX 3090s three. Um, that is standard for them, though. They, they really like that speed. Lemming Train is uh, famous for their ability to just wolf pack those AMX 3090 yep. together and, and really use them to their full effect. Um, but just uh, Kazan Cruz pick next. I think they're probably discussing... Now, do we want to pick another T69? Do we want to really head up towards the middle, which is what they've been doing pretty much every map, apart from when they played De Nova in that first game where it was so close and they were so close to winning. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe even that T32 will come out. Yeah, that'd be an interesting choice if they are going for that. 
I mean, it's, it's always indicative. I always feel this map kind of shows how the team are feeling against the opponent. Are they going for the, maybe the 416? Are they going for that, you know, more kind of passive role? Maybe the T32? It's, it's kind of showing where they're at, maybe. And, well, it's Lemming Train to pick up the T32 there. Yeah, the Kazan T69, Lemming Train T32. So, Lemming Train definitely heading up towards the middle, but it's kind of a good counter towards their already fast lineup with those 3MX3090. So, fair enough. Uh, Kansas Crew with a much more solid, robust lineup with the three T69s, the Pershing and the MX3090. So, both teams have strongs and, and strengths and weaknesses, but I say they're pretty even. Yeah, they both have their own kind of plus and minuses, as you mentioned there. And I think we see that coming into its own on this map, especially. It's a bit of a proving ground, but I've never been a fan of it um, in the hands of these two teams. Nothing wrong with it, do not get me wrong, but there's certainly no Dignitas here or Virtus Pro that we'll be seeing tomorrow who have real strengths laying in this map. And I think uh, it'll be a bit of a defining moment for either team because we are almost ready to get underway here. So give me a quick prediction. Who do you think is going to pick this map up? Um, Kasna. You're going for Kasna. See, I'm going to go for Lemming Train on this one. I feel as though maybe they've got something waiting now. You know, they've got Butcher in the mix, but a Mac are really strong players. It's hard to deny them, but we are now seconds away from getting underway into battle number one here. It will be Kasna Crew starting in the north in that golden yellow. And in the south, it will be Lemming Train in blue. And, well, very different teams, very different styles. But right now, they are going head-to-head -head here to see who's going to claim that little bit of an advantage into the first map, which is Prokhorovka. Lemming Train heading up the middle. Interesting that that T32 isn't going towards the left. Indeed, it's just charging straight up the middle. It might struggle a little bit because he has to think about more than one angle. And leads for Kazna Crew. They are going for the village push. First spot's coming out between Ili and Veko. Both are not reloaded, so no danger there. Unless a pop shot comes out from uh, from one of the sides. And does it does. Indeed, it does. Hyber tracking him with his Pershing. Brilliant shot there. Him, it didn't do any damage, but maybe that, well, that definitely that uh, repair queue was burnt there on the MX3090, so that could actually. Uh, really affect his ability to get out of a bad situation like he did then. Potomac are now going forwards in that T32, a massive bruiser of a tank, um, get himself a good position behind that rock where he is pretty safe. Now Lemming Train, they know that Kazna Crew is over towards that village. Kazna Crew don't know quite as much as Lemming Train does, um, but they have a good idea. Okay, the Pershing's there, so the rest of the team must be around there. Well, let's find out. This is probably the closest quarter game we've seen so far early on. Uh, Cobra Leone has received a touch of damage there, but nothing to really write home about yet, but they are so close to each other. We're seeing a little bit of a tier one and a butcher split. We're just using his name now as, as the actual split up towards that one line towards the opposition's flag, maybe trying to force them out of position within that village. A couple of shots coming back and forth, teasing around more than anything. We are seeing a reload coming for Steel Mojo, trying to keep as many shells uh, loaded up as possible. As the opponents aren't too far away, Carmen has received a good chunk of damage as well, down to 55 HP. So this is pretty much all even here. And there we go, first kill will be coming in. That is Cobra Leon down and out. And that's a little bit less of an information gatherer kind of removed away. So Kazuki Crew at a slight disadvantage. But, you know, I still favor the side they're on here. I don't know why, but today it seems whoever kind of dominates that village side of things just has a slight advantage. Yeah, they have all that cover, basically. Um, well, okay, the kind of negating factor is the fact that uh, the uh, T32 of uh, Potomac is such a good heavy tank player. He's always playing the 5100 or the T32. He can sit hull down behind those railroads and really uh, put pressure onto them. But you, you can just see then it turns the turret slightly and you're going to get a face fall of AMX 3090 or, or Pershing or T69 even. So he's going to be very careful. Second tier one now going down for Kazakru. Both tier ones out of the equation. Not a big deal on, on Prokhorovka, but still definitely a blow to them. And there's only so much Potomaco is going to be able to do uh, trying to put pressure on Veko now getting oh, punished. Oh, oh, oh. Lemming Trainer and just working their way into this game, sneaking their way in. And uh, Kansas Crew so far haven't tried anything. They got themselves into that initial position. You know, they can try and just push on to that uh, T32 because the MX3090 is out of position. The other one is, is even further down up into the C line. Um, so they do have that option, but they obviously can't see what we can see. They can only see their side of the map. So they definitely don't have that option yet. It looks like uh, Lemon Train also going to send up a tank up the hill, which would be that a great move for them. Interesting. That is a very good read here. If they've assumed where you know the, the shots from Veko are coming from, because Butcher connected the shell, if they're sending a tank round the back, that would be absolutely fantastic. So hopefully we can find out who that is. If it's just a tier one, or if it's actually a player of uh, more substance there uh, being in play, and if it is someone of kind of substance who can you know really land a shell, then we could see a massive difference coming from these guys. So. And uh, here's Bazzoni keeping eyes across, all very still and quiet on the Western Front so far. Tentative stuff, though. 
I think this is actually the Western Front. I'm pretty sure this is actually a map. It might be the Eastern Front, actually, uh, modelled on, on one of the famous <laughs> battlefields. Um, so fair enough, call there, Lauren. There's some history, maybe. Um, Only but six, I knew. <laughs> six, six, six minutes left on the clock. Um, maybe some push will come out, but uh, our head admin's actually looking at uh, our head admin's actually looking at uh, so far Veco's computer. So perhaps a little bit of a technical problem. I was wondering why Kazaku weren't actually moving then, because they had the opportunity yeah, to move on to Proto Macro and Materials. I think Veco's just spinning around in circles. Which oh is yeah, hilarious. that's fair enough. You, you literally just doing is, donuts. You spin me right round, baby. That's exactly the song playing in the background. Yeah, he's got. So it, it, yeah, so his key <laughs> is literally stuck down. That's why that he's spinning That is fantastic. He is literally doing. I wish we could show you this because yeah. poor old Veco is just chilling out right now, going in circles. He's having a great time. If you get nauseous really easily, you would not want to be in his position because all you could be doing is just spinning around, bless him. But yes, obviously technical issues are amongst us. There's not much you can do. <laughs> it's just because I can see it right in front of me. I keep smiling at it because it's just going. Nyeh. Oh, Becco. <laughs> I thought it was like some tactical thing he was doing, but uh, no, apparently no. just keyboard breaking. I do remember being at an event in Holland a long, long time ago, and one of the players' keyboards, uh, oh, the D key got stuck down. Yeah. So he was, he was trying to rush into one of the sites and literally just kind of crab crabbed walked across. <laughs> in front of everyone just to the side and just got <laughs> mowed down. Uh, Veco seems to have stopped moving, so maybe the keyboard issue has been wrong. He just pried it out, probably. Um, but uh, <laughs> we'll yeah. see how this one goes. It could be a matter of minutes or maybe a little bit longer, but I think we will be negating this, maybe, and restarting it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think that would be a far stretch of the imagination if a player's keyboard is literally dying on us. Um, <laughs> so bear with us while we find out what's going on. The admins are scurrying around trying to uh, locate the issue while you just stare at us for a while. So while you're staring at us, let us know how you think that one went. It was probably... Was that all right to a start? Do you think anyone had the advantage? Um, obviously, we were only a couple of minutes into that. We saw very little. We saw basically the removal of Tier 1. So mm -hmm. you can't really read too much into it. But maybe you're thinking about that village side being a little bit more kind of indicative of the winners. Because we've generally seen so far, anyone on that side has been picking up the games and yeah. kind of leading this. So maybe a new trend that's kind of been paying off. Maybe not. And uh, let us know, obviously. Do make sure you keep those tweets coming with the hashtag WGLEU. And make sure you tweet this stream out there, obviously. You know, I'm just waiting for this one to get back underway. Now, let's kind of talk about that start as well, because I think there's a, a few things to be said there. Losing those tier ones on Prokhorovka, I kind of want to cover, you know, why is it, I, I think it's the best question to pose to you is, why is it not as, not as, they're not such a vital, integral part on a map like Prokhorovka compared to, let's say, your Ensk or your for example? So you use tier ones for one of two reasons. Um, you can kind of put them off onto a flank right. just to spot up that flank and give your, your team an idea if something pushes along there. Um, or you can put them into the cap. Now, the problem with putting Tier 1 into the cap is that um, with the view range featured on these tanks, you can just stand in the middle and you can kill them. Yep. So there's, there's not really that much point of doing that in the middle of a field. All the base trash has been destroyed, so you have no chance there. Um, so basically, for those two reasons, um, the T1 is its still obviously very useful, but it's, it's no Himmelsdorf, no uh, Ensk even, where we've seen it being pretty damn strong, but we are almost ready to get back into game. I, I'm, I'm worried Another to see Beko just seconds. spin around though again, just doing donuts. And you might have the curse, the keyboard curse. There, there's a keyboard curse? When you spill coke on it. I'm pretty sure that's what people say. I, I did that once, maybe more, but it... it you know, do like, it like my, every day. I've got a problem, You right? and Nelly, it's either Red Bull or it's coffee. All right, my mechanical keyboard, okay, generally with holds against it, and it kind of holds its own, but this time I think it went too far. It was like a coke too far. <laughs> but anyway, we are live into the game now, so let's kind of refresh our minds, reset ourselves in the north, in the golden yellow. It's going to be Kazna Crew, and in the south, in the blue, it's Lemming Train, and this time we are seeing Kazna Crew beelining over towards their village. Why do you think they're going for it so aggressively this time? They just have a good tactic for it. Um, they tried against Dinova, but from the other side, um, it was a pretty good game. They had the advantage. Protomaco, instead of going up towards the right side, now opting to go up to the left. Elian just there to do spots. Indeed, his spot went out. Hyber in his Pershing. So, let me train now. Another bit of information. They know where Kazakou are. They know that they're doing the same uh, tactic as they were doing last time. So, they're sending that AMX 1390 straight down around. But it does look like Kaz are actually uh, sending a tank up towards the left. Carmen in an ingenious position that's, in that's behind a bush, just really spotting out. Car uh, Crook's being spotted in that uh, T69. So Lemon Train, another bit of good information. First job for, for Kaz crew is to take out Carmen, but to do that, they'll have the firing line of uh, Kaz crew on the side. This is lovely stuff already. Those spots paying off. Crux does receive a good chunk of damage there, down to 1100, which is 
a, it's a big difference at such a you know early start here and still mojo receives one as well and a second oh my god this is an absolute pounding. Kaznik are in trouble. Still, Mojo does not know where to run and hide to. Veko finally takes down Carmen, but that little trickle of information that came through caused so much problems here. And you're seeing the fire continue. They could not avoid it. veko has gone low, as is still Mojo. He is down to a slither of health. 100 HP here. A literally a strong breeze will take him down. Veko's down to 319. That is not the start Kaznik crew wanted. Perfect bait by Carmen there. Literally like a fly to a light. They just came in and they tried to take him down. Elian was in the perfect position. He did so much damage. Although still Mojo's not out of the game yet, still 100% HP, it's it's a lot of damage onto uh, Kazan Crew. They're really going to have to fight their way back into the game. First of all, they need to get themselves safe. Some, uh, some get themselves safe. Some good shots coming onto Potomaka. First one actually doing some damage. That's Veko in the MX-30-9288 coming out from him. But Butcher finally finishing off Still Mojo. Yeah, and look at Hyber going straight around the back. He's not messing around. These guys are trying to fight their way through here. They're going to have to use what they've got. They've got a cap underway in favor to Lemming Train as well. This is unbelievable pressure now to Kazan Crew. Hyber got tracked there. He's going to have to try and get that one back up and running. And Butcher is just laying down the fire. This man is such a beast as well. One of the best actors accuracy players for Lemming Train up in the 70s and 80s overall. One minute and 22 seconds on this cap here. And eventually we're going to have to see Kazan Crew trying to face these guys down with minimal health left. Veko low, Crux low, Hyber damaged as well. It's not the position you want to be challenging in, but it's all you've got. But they've still got a couple of players sitting fairly healthy. Nias Bazzoni, for example, can do a lot of work here, but he's still got Butcher breathing down his neck. But they've got to make their move soon. And I think it's not too far away here because it looks like they're going to start going. Oh, Materis does find Hyber. But here comes a little bit of a counter. Crux gets a shell to the face. Counter cap underway. Kazakhru need to get moving here because there's not much else of an option. Polo Mako focusing onto Crux. 47 seconds against 43. Nalm's fairly low. Veko's damage. Keep that in mind. Watch those HP bars here because Veko is now in trouble. Butcher is doing the work and he's done it enough. He's taken him down. And now Nalm and Crux holding on for dear life here. But the clock is against them more than anything. The fire goes back and forth. Crux goes all in. Gets smashed on the trail road. And now pretty much Nalm left with everything to do. Four seconds left onto the capture anyway. That is the least of his troubles. He's got enough players staring him down. And ladies and gentlemen, the first map going decisively in favor to Lemming Train. Absolutely powering through there. They needed that for a start. Brilliant play by Lemming Train. Uh, perfect crossfire. And they knew exactly how to corner in Kazan Crew. I think a little bit of a misjudgment, a little lack of foresight by Still Mojo pushing on to Carmen. I mean, not only was he in, in a good position to spot, but also bait. Uh, and Potomaku, the perfect choice of tank to crossfire. And you can see Materius there, the new member of Lemon Train for this season, or at least for some of this season. Look at his stats, 2.0 KD ratio, 931 damage per battle. And he does play the T69, the MX-1390, so that's pretty fantastic when you consider that. Um, but yeah, great Really clever gameplay by Lemming Train. Just full-on proper tanks. That's exactly how you need to play. Uh, the only way uh, Kazer could actually got out of that is if they just push, pushed everything into the middle and, and hoped to God that they got lucky and won that game and then killed the T1 on the cap. Because going north, they would have just gotten a uh, Lemming Train coming from behind. And obviously going south is, is not an option. So first round going to the Lemmings as we move, move into our second round, which will be Himmelsdorf. Now, this was kind of what we expected here. We did not expect Kazan to pick up that first map. We never felt it was their strength. But this is the first time we're really seeing Kazan crew going in with a disadvantage off the start. They've always kind of picked up that first map. Because generally, they probably picked to be able to make sure they do have They probably had a little bit of luck, maybe with the coin toss. Who knows? But now, they're going to Himmelsdorf, a strong map for them. Not probably their best, but certainly something they're capable on with a disadvantage. This is where they prove themselves. The tank picks are beginning. So let's hop across to that and take me through what we're seeing at the moment. Pretty much the standard picks, actually. Double IS-3 for both teams, double T1, double AMX-5100, then the last two picks being the 5100. So the first time today, I do believe that we're having the exact same lineup for both triple 5100, double IS-3, double T1. So this is going to be all about skill and tactics, as opposed to having, you know, for instance, Lemming Train took a, a Waffentrag against the Nova, which uh, didn't end up working, or, or Kazakou. So I think... For them, Kazan Crew, they need to get themselves into the game. Okay, they've lost the open map battle, yep. but they can get themselves back into the city uh, battle. So this is really a make or break time for Kazan Crew more than anything. Okay, they won't lose. They'll be 2-0 down. They can still, uh, they still can try and win. But this honestly will give Lemming Train such a boost if they do win on this one that it might just be too much of a slippery slope for Kazan Crew to stay upright on. 
Well, we can only find out. You can see on their faces they are extraordinarily focused. Now, Lemming Train finally with a little bit of a glimmer of hope in the background. I thought that was you then with a the quiff then. It looked a little bit like you when he kind of went very quickly. Cheers, mate. No worries. I was just, it, on the angle, it looked like your hair, man. Chill, calm down. All right, look. Other casters from America try and be like you with your quiff. So. <laughs> I know. I feel kind of I feel you should, good. You should help him out, man. You know what I mean? And give him some tips. Yeah. But First, you, I'll help Mitch out, and then I'll hit him. There's help no him. helping Mitch, bless him. Have you seen the state of the boy? But anyway, we are seeing Kaznikru there looking very focused for once, uh, looking very serious. Normally, there was a lot of smiles and laughter at the start. This time now, it's all very much uh, uh, focus on their faces, trying to keep themselves cool, calm, and collected. And here we go. Headsets going on. It is game time now. We are going to be moments away from Himmelsdorf. And let's keep in mind, you know, Leving Train are playing in front of their home crowd here. These are the people they do not want to be letting down. This is their hometown, home audience, and they want to be doing the best they can. So, guys, make sure you are supporting these people at home. Make sure you get your predictions through to us on Twitter, hashtag WGLEU, because the battle is about to start. We are going to be on Himmelsdorf for battle number two. In the north, in blue, it's going to be Lemming Train currently with a one-map advantage, facing off against Kasner Crew in the south, in the golden yellow, finally going to the second map with a disadvantage. But what are we seeing so far from these guys? So most of the firepower for Lemming Train going over to the 2 a 3 line. That's uh, the double AMX 5400 and Materius playing the IS 3. So, pretty much all their best heavy tanks players going over. That's kind of indicative of, of what they want to do. They're allowed to try and get the cross shot near Pizzorni, punishes him for that. And immediately, Lemming Train have the boots on in this. And honestly, that tier one, that position is so important. And the tier one full stop is so important. But Kazza Crew, once again, for going for that eight line push with an IS3, trying to find their way into the game. Still, Mojo's got to be careful because he got set a light last time he was in this position. One AMX 5100 going up the uh, road and a couple more towards that two three line. And I think uh, Lemming Train kind of expected this, looking at their positioning, already getting a good shot towards Steel Mojo, taking him down to 1088. It's a pretty ideal start, and another wall land. Materius really punishing the opponents there. This is the ideal start for Lemon Train once again, just converting that confidence from the first map. Now, Steel Mojo needs to find something to do here because he got melted in the first map. Now he needs to find a way through in the second map because I think it was almost the first man to fall. And you don't want to be that twice in a row. We are seeing that hill exchange going down. Veco, nice little counter shot there. Punishing Materius for overstaying his welcome. Beautiful stuff. Finally alleviating the pressure from Steel Mojo, but he has had to push forward. But still, he should be fairly uncontested here unless he pushes past that D-line. That was so amazing by Veco, and he knew exactly when to go back. But that's what's good about Lemming Train. They're really good at uh, predicting and learning what the other team does and then just coming out with a brilliant plan. So. Props to Materius there. T1 battle going up on the hill. Kazakru do like that they're actually edging towards that eight line. You can see three tanks now over in that position. I believe that AMX 5100 coming off the hill will be joining joining him and uh, making it four tanks in total. But Neopazorni does seem to be ready there in his IS-3, uh, ready to try and crossfire. They are expecting that. Lemming Train do have a good idea what Kazakru like to do on this map. Um, maybe what a good idea for Lemming Train would be to head up that 2-3 line, take out that tank on its own, look for that tier one, and take him out and just stop any ability from for, for Kazakru Crew to actually cap uh, and just make sure that they get that uh, one tank down, get that tier point advantage and get that HP advantage at the same time. Let's see if they keep that in mind. They might start to think about that because there is a vast amount of tanks kind of uh, gaining presence down that banana line for Kazna Crew and actually Narlan backing away into Crux apparently. Decides to go for a little bit of a nudge there. And well, veko has been found by Alien there. Just a nice little shot across the map towards the central reserve. That's going to push him out of position. And Alien going straight on the reload. And let's see what uh, Kazna, Kazna Crew do in retort. They are actually going up the hill. That's Narlan leading the charge. You've got uh, Crux and still Mojo behind. The two I3s will take their time. The horsepower per ton ratio isn't particularly good compared to the 5100 heading up the hill, but they will get up there pretty sharpish. Um, but they will find that they'll get spotted immediately by the tier one um, who's uh, sitting up on top of that uh, on top of that crest. Um, but uh, Lemming Train not moving because they haven't spotted anything else. Snip's actually going to be that tier one there, um, spotting out pretty quickly. And as soon as they do get spotted, you'll see Lemming Train react immediately because their position right now is, is dealing with a two three line push and with an eight line push, the two standard tactics on Hillsdorf. But as soon as they go on hill, you can see already uh, they're starting to get themselves into a different position. The IS3 is moving up slightly to the right. The other one's moving up slightly to the left. And then they'll start heading up the two three line covering all bases and getting the last tank off the hill to join his compatriots down in that push. It's literally like watching a game of dominoes. One falls and the rest will kind of adjust accordingly. Ponomako spotting out Cobra Leone there. Not going to find the shot too easily this time, but 
And now their game plan has been slightly rumbled. And we're going to see these guys kind of go into the late game almost now. Again, to that six minute marker. Very few tanks falling, only Paluda so far being taken out very early on, early on in the tier one. No major fault though, but such an important tank sometimes on this map. And Cobra Leone could really get the spots out here if he managed to kind of locate the players just trundling down those tracks to the right. Could be some beautifully vital information. Already a uh, defensive retraction coming out from Kazna crew, and they need to take down Cobra Leone, and that's exactly what's going to be happening. Polo Mako. Did he just miss another shot? He hit his tracks and tracked him unluckily. Um, he does actually and now ammo one. racks him. You, sh you should never really shoot when you're driving over train tracks. Train tracks are the bane of every tank. And just slows you down amazingly. But you can see Kazakh how fast they can charge off that hill. Let me train have to get themselves organized, get themselves reloaded, especially Potomaku, who, who spared two shots, you know, spared three shots for that uh, for that one tier one tank. So they got to get reloaded, get themselves reset and uh, find another way in because obviously they know Kazaku are reacting that materials. Um, just try to do another shot onto uh, the, the retreating tanks of, uh, of Kazaku so they know where they are. Um, but both these teams are playing a real game of cat and mouse. You see one react, the other one reacts immediately. But this is the crux time because both tier ones are down for the side of Kazaku so they can't do that reactionary play without actually sacrificing something. And that's what we have to take into account. Is it worth the sacrifice at the moment? They, uh, you know, no team has the advantage as such of tier points, so it would be a draw. But I feel as though they're playing too close to the mark here. We are seeing an interesting push coming out. Snip keeping eyes on, so that's going to be feeding the information through once again. We are, oh, lovely little shot. Nears Pizzorni finding Hyper on the cross there. That has even caught out Hyper a fair bit. Crux now having to stop in his tracks. And a little sneaky bit of play that they wanted to pull off. Once again, halted by this position. It kind of caught out still Mojo at the start as well. And that's not how uh, Kazakrew fancy that kind of unfolding. But for Kazakrew, I think they think more tanks are there than they actually are because they stopped. It was only one. Hyper's a little bit worried about getting shot from the side by another IS-3. Obviously, 390 average damage there. You can hit up to 488. Elian punishing Crooks. So Lemming Train, once again, having the crossfire on every angle. But Elian's on his own. All Kazna crew need to get past that one blockade. Take down Elian. He won't be that fast up the hill, especially if you can head up the shorter road and manage to get in that in that section. But you can see... Materius and Potomaka working their own around, around there. Vecco's on his own. He's having to retreat, but you've got that one ice three in the, in the road ready to try and deal with him. Vecco getting punished for his slowness, and he has managed to get out of there. But but now, two tanks for Kazaku on half HP. Yeah, this is dangerous times. We are seeing slowly but surely a slightly more kind of pressing team coming out from Lemming Train, edging closer every single time. Seeing those two split off now down towards that K line, they could be causing trouble. You can see the kind of cautious split though, they're not going all in, they're not just be throwing tanks in there, they still want to watch for any rotates, anyone coming around the back, still Mojo and Hyper being spread out. Nice little shot coming through there, there is a reply finally, Nis Pazorni gets taken off that perfect health, but the base will be starting to be captured and that's the important factor here. And they may be expecting it to just be a dear little tier one, it's certainly a lot more than that waiting for them. They've got a cross pass materials now. Kind of staring down, waiting for these tanks to push, to wait for these tanks to cross. Alien backs away. They've got a good little setup here, actually, to kind of rope them around. But Alien is very far away from the action if he does get called out. 1 minute 20 on the clock. The action's going to have to come down pretty damn soon. Stormo just doing some serious damage there. They're, you know, two against one, and he's actually winning that engage. But now two tanks in the cap. You can see that cap will start to get dropped real quick now, down to 33 seconds from a minute. Uh, before Lemon Train just had one in there, trying to bait them out. Nia Bazorni and uh, will be joining po Potomaco and Butcher, but Becco's there. I was about to say Nils Pizzorni could get to a fantastic position to watch the push and cover off his teammates. But let's bear in mind that clock is still ticking. So right now Lemming Train are just buying time. That's all they have to do. Still Mojo has managed just about to cross past Materius' eyes. Ten seconds now remain. We are seeing the scramble coming out from Kazakrew. They've got to get back and reset that capture point. Hyber comes round. Finally resets it. 33 seconds on the board. Now Butcher and Potomako need to be able to find that reply. They're in trouble. Good bit of damage come from Narlin, but they are still in trouble. Hyber is there. And he is wanting this. Oh, nice play coming in from Hyber with still Mojo in tow. But can there be a reply now from Lemming Train? Can they come around the side? Butcher now trying to spin this one around towards still Mojo, who's pretty much on his own. He's got backup, but not near him. And he's going to feel the pain of that one being taken out of the game. And now let's see exactly what they have in store. It's four against three, but you can see how much HP Crux have left. And he is their best. 
best player, 1,214 on the ice. He's just got to play it perfectly. He's got Materius in the front. He's got Elian to the right. He's got two to think about, but he is so good. First shell does connect onto him, but Elian, he's coming from behind. Alien coming around the back can make all of the difference here. He's not expecting them. This could mean real trouble. First shell will land, and there's going to be a follow-up as well. Crux is going to be going down, and there we have it. Alien swinging this one back drastically in favor to Lemming Train. Can there be a turnaround? Nalem and Veko still alive. Vital plays, but Nalem being tracked means no likely escape. As now the punishing shell surely going to be from Materius, but no, it's Alien doing the damage. Now Veko, the last man standing here. Kazna crew, they're letting this one slip. This has just literally trickled through their fingers as they were so close then. Almost all even, but Veko now looking to do something, looking to cause some trouble. Nears Pazorn is low, as is Butcher, but 24 seconds on the cap. Oh my word, he does manage to take down Nears Pazorn, but is that going to be enough really here? He's uh, certainly not going to be enough. <laughs> Tyrius doing the final shell, bringing the score to 2 0. And uh, Lemming Train looking awfully confident. That was a close game. It was actually uh, four versus three um, in, in both teams, and I think. Uh, Kaz and crew slightly miscalculated their push and despite the fact that they actually managed to stop the cap um, they just didn't have the HP if they didn't lose the little bits of HP here and there didn't have two tanks down to half I think they would have had a slightly more successful game but now Lemming Train just they look unbelievably strong this is yes. what we expect from Lemming Train this is the team that finished 12 wins to 4 losses in the online stage yeah and this is the first time we've seen Kaz and crew not looking as uh, pumped up there they're kind of Lacking a little bit towards, uh, is there arguments going down there? That, that could be uh, a little bit of a problem, actually. That's not exactly ideal going through these guys' minds. If they're not focused up, that could cause real problems. Even they have two map advantage. Swings and roundabouts. Mines and Ents, Ents being next. I'd say these are Kazna maps. So we do need to make sure that uh, Kazaku do not let this one drop at all. One more map in between them. These guys very focused. Very, very focused now because Lemming Train are on the verge of a fantastic position for tomorrow. The ideal position in their mind, at least. The best of a bad situation, should I say. Whereas Kazna, they've got a lot of work to do. I think these guys are gonna have a quick chat here because we are obviously getting to that map, um, well, that, that kind of three possible maps in a row. That's the big threat here. They wanna secure this, they wanna make sure it works, make sure they are feeling prepared for it. And guys at home, this is your time again. Make sure you get your tweets over here because I wanna know if you think this is gonna be a three map victory to Lemming Train. Bit of a surprise so far, they're looking confident. Kazna crew, they're not looking so happy right now. Make sure you get your, three, your tweets through to us at LaughterWOT, at, at they call me Pansy if I can use my words, which are always difficult, with the hashtag WGLEU. I want to know what you think right now. Obviously, get up on Facebook as well. Make sure you get involved because at the moment, Kazna seem a little bit down and out, and these guys look so strong today. They've been such a great team. Um, just judging on, on past results, I, I thought they'd be doing a little better than they are. Maybe this is a turning point. You can see they're kind of disheartened a little bit. Morale is not high. They need someone to, to really give them that boost. Um, and that's really down to Hyber and Silmoja, the, the team captain and the real shot caller there. Um, but there's still a chance they're not out of the equation completely. You can see how much more energetic uh, Lemming Train. Quite happy, smiling on the smiles on their faces. You can see Snip in the background, Elian in the foreground. Um, all, all pretty chirpy and ready to go into the third and possibly final battle. Yeah, I think they are just having a very quick break um, to make sure they are mentally prepared for this one because this could be a real downfall now for Kaz. Now, they showed true strength today and real reserve and real resolve, should I say, in the way they've been playing, but they need to now convert that. They need to now not let the fact they didn't have the advantage early on become the biggest factor against them. And that's what it seems to be at the moment. They're not being able to kind of being able to control themselves, but they just haven't been able to kind of convert that confidence they've always had before. They can't just muster it out of nowhere. And last time they were easily able to do so, but I don't know why they're struggling so much now. Do you think Lemming Trainer just playing that step better? Yeah, I think they've they've woken up today. I think they've woken up now and they're, and they're just raring to go. Uh, they need to be in that top four at the end of the day. Um, if they have to win this one to go into tomorrow, they will be fighting Team Dignitas if they do take this third map. Um, and, uh, well, it's, it's, it's going to be a hard game either way. Um, obviously, Nova's going on to fight uh, Virtus Pro, who's had a week's boot, boot camp, so I'm not sure which one I would personally prefer to fight. They're both so, so good. Both have a season title. Each season one went to Team Dignitas. Season two against Evil Panda Squad went to Virtus Pro 4-1. to one. Um, But you can kind of see everyone's in garage getting ready for this uh, next map. It will be Mines. 
So uh, uh, definitely a map that favours the northern position. I would be I'll be interested to see which teams actually in the north. Um, I think yeah. it's going to be. Uh, it might be Kazakh crew. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it. So mm -hmm. yeah, Kazner in the north. That could be a nice uh, start for them. They find they really do need it to be fair. And we can kind of have a little ch talk about uh, mines. We haven't really seen it played too much. At the moment, it's kind of turned into a bit more of an abbey almost. It seems they don't want that random factor maybe or such a kind of maybe advantageous start towards our northern side that you can get kind of in play or being a factor towards a defining map. But, you know, Cast Crew, they're, they're strong on this map. They always kind of seem to play well here. They always have um, some sort of tactics waiting on this one. But do you think the kind of results we've seen so far might just kind of hold them back a bit and they might really start struggling to kind of convert that into the games? And what do you think we're going to see here results-wise? Well, Lemming, uh, Kaz and crew really do rely on that uh, passion, as you as you saw in the first few games. So, yeah, yeah I think for sure. Um, now they're feeling a little bit down and out. They're definitely going to struggle, but they it's do or die. They need to do this one. They need to pick it up, regardless of the side they're starting on, regardless of the team they're playing. Yeah, and with all that in mind, uh, I think we're going to quickly pass over to Melly to give you guys a little bit of a kind of quick update of how to get involved and kind of what you've been saying so far, because we do want to know your thoughts from obviously the guys out there in Twitch chat and everyone watching. So, guys, let's pass over to Melly. Thank you, Lauren. Well, you two guys are doing an awesome job. I should tell you that from the Twitch chat and the Twitter community and Facebook and everywhere else, it's like plastered all over the internet. Seriously, a big applause for Lauren and Ollie just doing such an amazing job here at the venue. But our audience is already sleeping, <laughs> so no, no applause for you. I'm so sorry. I will, I will clap for you, my dears. Oh, there was someone clapping. So someone, at least one person appreciate your work, right? at least one person, isn't that nice? I bet you at home do also appreciate their awesome work. Just follow them and show them a bit of, bit of love, a tiny bit, not too much. No? We we'll keep them like on the ground still, but follow them at they, at they call me pansy and laughter, laughter, W-O-T is right, right? He's, he's nodding, I should know that actually, but it's getting late, We're, but we have amazing games. And before we head into the possibly last mat, map of today, um, I will give you a quick, a quick update from the Twitter community. They fear for Kasna Crew, to be honest. They fear if they pull off like the next game, like the last ones, it will, it will be really hard for them to advance to the next stage. So people, put yourself together. You're here on the finals. You can do that. And Lemming Train, of course, you have a big community standing right behind you. And people want to see you win as well. I, we could actually have a quick look of the magic of the internet, if it works, hopefully, what the vote is saying. In the meantime, you can just head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGLEU, and vote yourself. Because as Lauren already mentioned, a lot of times we love hearing from you and we love to hear your opinions. And your opinions matter. Your opinions are key. So you're most of the time, you're right. So. We have to rely on what you're actually voting and saying. So, otherwise, we'll, we're kind of, no, I wouldn't say screwed, but it's pretty much that way. So, let's see, we have, oh, we have a pretty clear vote for Lemming Train going on, 80%. So, as I said, the community is standing right behind you guys, but um, there is a hardcore fan base for Cousin Crew as well, and I think, they, they can actually pull that off. They could come back, but they have to get themselves together. together. Oli is, uh, is nodding furiously, so I, I have s indeed said something right. So before giving back to the casters, before heading back to the casters, I will show you a very de dedicated fan that actually sent me a picture of him studying for, uh, for a test. So if we have a look, uh, quick look on my monitor, you could actually see it. He's studying, and at the same time, he's watching our finals. So that's dedication and passion, of course. So on the next thing, do I really look like that? I, I, have, to, I have to take care of my face, it seems. But I, well, Melly is not amused, right? Yeah, I'm definitely not amused. <laughs> well, thank you for that. It's a lovely shot. 
But, well, without further ado, get involved, people. Tweet me via, via the use of hashtag WGLEU. Get involved in our, in our vote on our Facebook page and become part of our network by simply following and liking us. And, of course, follow our Twitch channel so you get notified as soon as we're going live the next time. And, yeah, this, it seems like the casters are kind of ready. They're putting back, back putting their headphones back on. <sighs> Okay, perfect. I, the, the little my ear just said that I'm allowed to throw back to our lovely casters, and I will do that. Have fun in, in the next map. See you later. Well, uh, as much as we like to get this underway, I think there may be some issues. So mm. we're just we're reading the chat right now, so I think they might be changing servers, so bear with us. We will not throw Melly under the bus again to kind of uh, be abused by you guys sending lovely pictures. We've got a very similar picture, to be fair. There is one being tweeted to us I did see earlier, so we haven't quite escaped it yet as ourselves. So, yeah. There's always one. There's always to be fair, it's better than the face swap one we had before. That was, mm. that was terrifying. That, was, that wasn't great. That was horrific. Lee loved that. Lee was a, not a big fan of that at all. Really didn't appreciate that in the slightest. But uh, we are just waiting for these guys, obviously, to get back in the game and uh, get on the correct server. So they're actually playing on uh, a relatively stable one at the moment because, obviously, they don't want to be feeling those uh, any lags or any issues uh, affecting their game. But we can kind of have a little chat about mines and what it kind of entails and what we can be kind of be expecting from these two teams because, as we said, not seen a lot of mines here. Not a map that we've seen a massive amount of, probably more than steps, but that's not saying much. Um, what do you think we're going to see? What sort of play are we going to see? Are we going to be seeing anything very specific here? Are we going to be seeing, you know, uh, maybe more of a focus towards the hill? We've seen teams, we've seen the NA teams going for the bit more of a quirky side of using the lighthouse, and there's been some really interesting stuff, especially with you know the village side opening up on mines a little bit more to the feasibility. We've seen 30, 90 splits. What do you think we're going to be seeing here? Well, from the north, it's it's definitely about getting the uh, getting the hill. Basically, you can get up there quicker. You can get in your tanks position uh, there quicker. So. Whoever gets a northern position will almost certainly be doing that, or at least defending the hill from any uh, from the from the southern team who may be trying to get there as well. Um, but that that is really mines in a nutshell. It's about getting that hill, not as quite as much as it was when it was called Bagorki or Hills, but it's it's pretty similar map for, from the from the beginning of the map. Um, uh, quite a, quite a long time ago, I can't exactly remember when it was released, but it was definitely in closed beta. Um, so it's always a bit of an interesting one. Um, without artillery, without the Storm Panzer Bison, since the uh, the uh, uh, the penetration was reduced, and it's a little bit harder to play because you can't work around uh, corners. Obviously, if you get your your Bison into a good position, you can shoot behind hills, and and you can really push and force teams to to come out and play. And um, it does look like our our teams are now ready to get underway. Cast the crew, almost all of them are here. Lemon Train, all here. Um, three times T32, three times AMX 1390, a Pershing and a T32 will be uh, uh, Lemming Train's final lineup. I do believe that's what Carmen just uh, wrote. So hopefully he's indeed correct. So um, I'm going to give this one to whoever starts north. What do you think? Um, all right, Kaznikov have not been playing the game I expected them to, and I, th I, I thought maybe the turnaround we'd see on Himmelsdorf. Basically, hmm. we didn't see that, so I find it very hard to put my faith in them now because. You know, Lemming Train have been playing extraordinarily well. They've they've really stepped up. They look consistent. They look strong. They've you know finally warmed up a little bit. Uh, it seems, and they're not playing as <laughs> just just digging for gold. Um, just just trying to be you know more of a sensible lineup. You know what I mean? They're not playing that random game or looking weak now. So it's hard to vote against them. And I I think Lemming Train are going to pick this one up. I'd like to see Kazna crew do it, but you know my heart says Kazna, but my brain is saying Lemon Train right now. Yeah, I I agree with you. Um, Lemming Train just so far ahead, 2 nil ahead, and they, they've looked so far ahead in every respect. And Kaz and Crew just they don't seem to have an answer for you know what is clearly a better team, Lemming Train. Um, I, would l I would love to see them come back. They still have that opportunity. Um, you know, they can win three maps in a row, and they will be winning, or we can get into a draw situation. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. But both teams seem to be 100% ready. And Kazza Crew now in the battle. Three, uh, two MX 1390, three MX 1390s, a Pershing and a T32 will be their final lineup. So, as they are loading the game, as you can see, we are now moments away from finding out if we are going to be going further than this, or will this be the last stand for Kazna Crew here? With everything to do, they must turn up and sort everything out that they had troubles with before. 
Yeah, well, we are going to find out now if they can kind of consolidate whatever those problems were in this moment. Mines is the map. They've had their strong times here before. They've shown they are a truly capable side. You can see the scores that we gave them. Kaz and crew, we, we probably tipped them for the win just maybe. But right now we're being proven wrong. So guys, let's get ready for Mines. Possibly the final battle here. Kaz and crew will be in the north in that gold and yellow. And in the south, it's going to be Lemming Train currently leading this game 2-0. And what are we seeing from the start here? So Lemon Train chugging it towards that hill with all their might. They're trying to get Potomako into the right position. Also, uh, Kazan crew doing a pretty similar situation. Lemon Train keeping a couple of tanks back, probably ready to snipe the inevitable, which is Kazan crew pushing most of their tanks up onto the hill. Two AMX 1390s now situated up there. Hyber spotted first. A shell connecting onto him. So doing pretty Ooh. well, actually. Great tactics from Lemon Train. Yeah, Pazorni, some fantastic sniping shots. Now two AMX 1390s down to 800. 50 odd HP, although um, uh, definitely worth it since Kazan crew up on the hill. Near Pozorni also getting punished. He might be in more trouble than he thinks. Yeah, Hyber and Steel Mojo dealing the damage. Nice little cheeky shot there from Hyber just before he backed away. And that's really put Nis Pozorni back in his place after a fantastic start from him. Just kind of being uh, reminded you're not going to get away with that as much as you think. So that hill now is in the hands of Kazan crew, but they're playing it fairly you know, fast and loose here. They're not just sitting on the top with those T69s here. They are working it out. We are just going to see exactly what they can do. Nears Bazorni cannot challenge like a one. Cobra Eon's going low. That's that tier one kind of been uh, focused down a touch. Still Mojo sees a couple of shells coming in. Going to avoid those. Doesn't have to be too, you know, hap-handed with this. You can see how tentative they are, but how far forward Kazan crew are playing this. They're not playing for playing from the baseline. They are really pushing forward, denying any access from Lemming Train here and pushing them back maybe to a lighthouse push or around the coast. They have so many options. I think one of the great things they can do is uh, push their main force, basically their T-32, off that hill, send their fast tanks uh, around the back. So they've got a triple AMX 3090 for that and just flank around and just collapse onto Lemming Train. They'll have absolutely no chance and Kobeon just gets taken out there. So one frag at least going to Lemming Train, but that might be ve their very last. Um, but Pilauda has to be taken down as well if if Lemming Train want to flank around onto uh, onto the side of uh, Kazna crew. So tentative start from Kazna. They've taken a bit of damage, but they have uh, dealt a fair bit of their own. Elian trying to get a shot onto Crux there, uh, but Crux not giving him that opportunity, although he just does and gets punished. I'm not sure exactly what he was doing there, but obviously enjoys eating shells. Yeah, you, it's not disrespectful to the opponent, but you've got to be careful with these guys. No matter the advantage, you still cannot be kind of challenging in that sort of aspect because looking at Kazna Crew's health, they're not sitting too well. Now, they may have the advantage, adv advantageous position, and uh, Nisbazoni is low, but overall, if Nisbazoni falls, it's fairly even. There we go, the Pershing has found Carmen, so pretty much all even on the scoreboard as well. Crux backing away, doesn't want to be overstaying his welcome. He did get a little bit of damage there, did he get ammo racked? No, he ammo racked uh, Nisbazoni, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, he got ammo racked. No, he did get ammo racked, so Crux getting taken quite low there, down to 604, but this is a very close game there. No one wants to make that mistake, no one wants to make that rush, even if they had the advantage, because. Well, you know, Lemon Train have two maps to play with. Kazan crew, this is it for them. This is this is do or die. Hyber's actually made his way around up into the B line. I'm not sure if he's actually going to head up towards Crux and Crux and support him. Maybe actually push on to uh, on to Elian. But more shots coming out onto Vecco. That's probably the AMX 5100 of Butcher sitting up behind. Such a great sniper there. Perfect position for him, in fact. And Kazan crew, they have the they had the advantage, but slowly but surely, as uh, Lemon Train often does, they're whittling their way into this game. Kazan crew. As soon as they had the advantage, they need to pounce on them. You know, come with that uh, split push, or just push all tanks into Potomacro, take him out. Butcher might struggle, but as long as you keep one tank on the hill to snipe down push Butcher and keep pressure on him, he won't be able to provide the firepower, and he won't be able to take down the T32, and which would have done the most damage. Yeah, ambitious shots coming out of high, but they're trying to find Alien quite some way away, but not going to be connecting those. Now I'm seeing there's Pizzorni just adjusting as well. Materius edging around that coastline, and... It's so close right now. Nis Pizzorni has to be careful. He cannot outstay his welcome in any position. He's still very, very low, down to 3 oh, three four four HP. He's the man we need to be careful of. He falls and maybe Pocket Mako gives it up a bit. And uh, obviously Lemming Train are in trouble, but this one is going to be played f a fair long way down the line because Kazan Crew, as you mentioned, they, they should be taking these advantages that they're making, but it's, it's so hard to kind of push yourself that because if one thing goes wrong, one mistake is made, you may give up your place for tomorrow, pretty much. You are going to be working the hardest game of your life. So, Kaz and crew now need to weigh up their options. What do they do from here? Where do they go? Do they wait for Lemming Train to make a move? I don't think Lemming Train will. I think they'll leave Kaz and crew the 
uh, kind of options there because they feel as though maybe the pressure will get to them. But you know, how are they going to go around this? They ha they have to they have to start doing some of their damage uh, some of the damage of their own. You know, look towards Butcher, try and find him, get into a good position where you can just or at least understand where Butcher is. Because then when you understand where he is, he's always going to be peeking, so always shoot in there. Look, you could easily get a shot from the hill onto him without him be without you being spotted. All he has to do is stand 15 meters behind a bush, so you don't negate the camo that that bush provides, and you'll be laughing all the way to the bank. Elian does get to hit there. He's down to eight, seven, eight, so a bit of trouble for him. But that's the, the nature of playing on the island. It is so hard to play, especially when the other team is ready and waiting with snipers on the mainland there. Potomako being spotted out over there in his T32. Hyber now actually collapsing. Ooh. He could be in trouble. Nibir Zorni has him from the side. Yeah, he does indeed. And Hyber not being able to return the shells just yet. Nibir Zorni is low, but if he can do this damage here, that is absolutely perfect. Backs away. Lovely play from Nibir Zorni. Just leaving it to Materials to finish that one off. And that's brought this back in favor to Lemming Train now. It's all up to Kazakrut. They've got to do the work. It's 1 0 down now. One tier 8 tank down. Kazakrut look awfully destroyed. This could be the end of the Kazakrut reign. Lemming Train. Now firmly in the driving seat, but uh, still where he is at the moment. Let me train. What they're not doing is 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 panicking and pushing forwards. That could be the opposite. Said it looks like Kazna crew are actually getting impatient and pushing in. Yeah, Kazna crew are kind of getting itchy here. Veko looking for a way through, and he could be met with some terrible force from the likes of Butcher if he does get a little bit half-handed here. But the push seems to be beginning. It's going to be down to that middle section. Alien obviously on Overwatch, but he's got no angle on the tanks that will be causing the damage. Nalum quite low as well, so he's now the weak link. He's the weakest link in the chain. He's got to be careful. We've taken down to. 184, so not the ideal position to be in. And Materius and Co are looking very anxious to get involved, but they know they've got to leave Kazakru to come to them, make the mistakes, and because they have the advantage here, they don't need to start pushing on this one. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly what they need to be doing, you know. And we can just take a minute to uh, to restock of what exactly is going on at the moment. Uh, Nalem's down to 184. Veko's a two shot pretty much as well. Poto Mako and Still Mojo still battling it out for that center ground. Um, still Mojo looks like he's the only one who, who's potentially capable of, of doing some serious damage. For Lemming Train, most of them have only taken one shot. Nia Pazorni has taken four, so he's down to 344 HP in his T69. But as long as they can keep him same, safe and keep him, his gun in the fight, he's going to be just about okay. Elian trying to find his way into the game as well. So for Lemming Train, it's only a matter of time, and that time is 2 minutes and 41 seconds to do something. Because if they don't push in and they don't actually win this one outright, they're crazy. They do have the 8-point advantage, but they also have a massive advantage in terms of firepower, HP, and pretty much everything you can possibly think of. So just push in and just finish this one off. Yeah, Kaz and the crew right now look like a bit of a wounded animal almost, just kind of limping around. They've got Nalem so low. Veko's not looking too pretty either at the moment. They are already down the points they desperately needed in this one. Veko trying to readjust, find an angle, find anything. Alien doing just the same thing. It's almost like these guys have like, you know, the sixth sense of how to kind of adjust perfectly in time. And at the moment, this is really troublesome for any Chasm Crew fans because they really have their backs to wall here. If they pull this one out, it'd be absolutely fantastic. And Veko is doing some good work here. If he gets around towards that um, you know, uh, lighthouse island, he might be able to get a spot across maybe and alleviate some of the pressure, but still. That central battle, still Mojo does take another, so he's still so low, 8, 9, 3. Materius and Podomaka, ooh, Podomaka is getting a bit aggressive here, still Mojo might have just given up a little bit too much of that middle ground, and we are going to have to depend on the flank going through. Podomaka is really looking like he wants to get involved here. He does have just about enough advantage. Veko has found that T69 of Nears Pizzoni. We are seeing the move beginning, and this is the ideal situation. Well, it was for a second from Gaston Group, but look at Alien pushing in. He's going to be challenged from the side, but can they get still Mojo down and still retain the advantage? That's what they needed, but can they hold on here? They're trying to get Veko into the fight. He's out of position, so Elian, he's just going to battle in. He's going to try and kick Nalem. He is a one-shot, but Elian only got a couple of shots. Let's bounty. They go back and forwards, but there we go. AMX 5100, a butcher comes in, and there were only Veko and Crooks left to keep Kazakru in this finals. And now it is just Veko alive, 491 HP. Paluda is there, but he can do nothing against the tanks who are rolling towards his teammate. Veko trying to run away with a tail between his legs, but they know it's over. It's happened. It's begun. And Butcher looks like he wants to get a final blow, and he just rams it into the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, Lemming Train, they look good from the start, and they certainly look good at the end there. And he's not letting that one go at all, is he? Butcher, yeah, he's, he's lost, losing like two HP a, a crack though, but Palauda, the final man standing as he often is, trying to at least get a kill onto Snib. 
Well, he's down to three HP and Snip will have the reload first. It's only a matter of time before the final blow is dealt to Kaznakru. There it is. Congratulations to Lemming Train for beating Kaznakru unbelievably 3-0. Final map was Mines. Congratulations to them. As you can see, a slightly somber looking Kaznakru going over to shake uh, Lemming Train. And it's Carmen right there, uh, the bold guy. So I think fantastic play by Lemming Train. Finally managing to get themselves into a comfortable position and finally managing just to play their normal style. They finally lived up to their reputation, I feel, in that game. Exactly. Showing what they're made of. You know, Kaznakru gave Denova a run for their money. And Denova absolutely trounced Lemming you know, Train, but now we are seeing what Lemming Train can do. And a uh, well-deserved game coming from those guys. Handshakes all around. They seem very pleased with themselves. And Kazakhstan can be proud. They did not play badly today. They played very well and valiantly, showing exactly what they made of the last game. Not quite the ideal result they would have wanted, but still, I think they can have their heads held high for this moment and look towards the next couple of games to see where they can go from here. They really have to start uh, stepping up from now. You know, they've done the groundwork, you know, Lemming Train, they, they have the background, they have the uh, results, but they now need to take it up to that next level. They will be going tomorrow to fight Team Dignitas in the, uh, in the top game. That'll be our first game for tomorrow indeed. So treat. they have an absolute cracker coming on there. They're going to really struggle, but with that 3-0, they will have a little bit of confidence at least. Um, and I think personally I'd prefer, prefer to fight Team Dignitas and Virtus.pro because they're slightly less predictable, but not in a good way in, in, in many ways. Yeah, it's all down to those kind of choices these guys are making and you know, it's it, it's all about tonight. We've seen some of these teams really doing well after a good night's sleep, kind of rethinking about the day they've had and coming out even stronger the next day. Some really struggle, so it'd be very interesting to see how these teams turn up. But I think we cannot take anything away from the way that Lemming Trains played today. They had a couple of very on and off games, I think we can call them. They were hit and miss for a little while. But then towards the last couple of moments there, in the last couple of matches, they looked like the Lemming Train we know that just caused real havoc towards the end of the online season of Season 3. So I do believe we are almost ready to get the interview underway. Mitch is looking around, kind of uh, nodding at me. I think he's nodding at me. We're not sure. We're just going to stare down Mitch right now. He's, he's looking at me. His hair looks great is what we're saying. So guys, let's pass over to Mitch to show you how good his quiff looks with Carmen. Yeah, it's a really small consolation there after what has already been said about me, guys, but that's okay. Let it slide. I'm here with Carmine. He's looking pretty happy. Shake my hand. I don't know what was in that bread roll you had before, but I want some because you guys definitely brought it back around uh, with that 3-0 victory, especially completely crushing the momentum of Kazna Crew. Now, a lot of people are saying, Lauren's been saying as well, you guys really returned to form after your game against Denova, really came back to you know what you were hoping to be playing like, and you made it through to tomorrow. So tell me, what was the difference between these two games? What, what, what was the change you guys made? Uh, first of all, change was the concentration. Second of all, we were more focused. It was, we were under the, we should, we could, it was our last chance, so we sh must win. So, and we had uh, better tactic for the maps, because Ruinberg sucked in our um, playing versus the Nova. And also what is very important, the word of tanks was also a bit of luck. So, especially at Mines, at end of the Mines. They had the luck with the killing, almost killing Nepozorno. We had the luck with the fires, uh, with tracking one of the 3090s. But it's also great pleasure for guys, really, GG. I'm very proud that level of our teams is going up and up because it wasn't easy. It's 3-0, like our 3-0 with the Nova. Doesn't mean it was, it was that easy for every, any of the sides. We will see tomorrow, we will be facing the Dignitas. And that is our hard work. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that honesty as well. Just add one word. Hey, uh, Hey, come on here. I just want, I just want to say that this guy is ending his career. So I want, shut up. So I want everybody to wish him good luck and clap your hands for the guy who is since first event on offline of World of Tanks. Ace from Evil Panda Squad. Yeah, th thank you for that. Also, pre appreciate your honesty bringing up the luck factor there as well. And of course, uh, our best wishes with Ace. He's definitely uh, an absolute top bloke from what I know of him. Now, guys, look, it's been a long day and uh, Carmen's already dropping his phone and all falling over himself. The guys are pretty tired. It's been a fairly strong run, but let us just cast our eye back over the day that has been. Of course, we started in the morning, if we can sit the bracket now, and uh, we can see the Lemming train with that first game on Evil Panda Squad. Uh, after that, going down to Denova, 
They did manage to make their way through through the, into the losers bracket though. Evil Panda Squad though, no luck today for them. All really going down twice in a row, and even despite you know having a bit of a break, they were rested, but not cohesive unfortunately. And Kasner Crew really made them pay. But of course, we did see a Kasner Crew go down to Lemming Train just now. So uh, well, I think that picture tells uh, really the entire story, guys. But tomorrow is where we get serious. Tomorrow is where Virtus Pro and Dignitas are finally going to come out of the woodwork and show us exactly what they've got. The uh, the Giants from the East, so to speak, we look very much forward to see what they've got to show. And definitely the onus is going to be on Lemming Train and Denova to see if they can actually take them head to head. Guys, the conversation doesn't end here. Get in touch with us on Twitter as well. We're going to go from here and probably, you know, try and uh, have a chat with you guys as well. Talk about the day, talk about the teams and all that stuff as well. So don't forget to include the hashtag WGLEU can tweet at us directly if you like, but we'll be checking on that hashtag as well. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are. We'd love to hear what your predictions are for tomorrow, so don't hesitate to get in touch. Well, uh, everyone's starting to mill around a little bit now, and I think we're starting to get towards the end of the day, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. We're going to be back tomorrow, 12 o'clock CET, same time, same place, hopefully same fantastic World of Tanks action for the last time today. My name's been Mitch uber Leslie. It's been my pleasure to be doing this alongside, of course, with Pansy Laughter and Melly. We've had a great time today, but we'll be back tomorrow. So, ladies and gentlemen, remember, 12 o'clock CET, same time, same place. We'll see you there. Good night.